All right. Uh, welcome back to Good Times or Good Ideas. Not good Times. Why am I saying Good Times? That's a whole different show. We're going to actually talk today about clocks, redstone clocks. So there's all kinds of different kinds of clocks. Uh, but what's the point of them? Well, okay. You're going to need uh, to be able to when you build redstone devices that you want to have activate regularly, you're going to want them to operate a sum of, sometimes. You're going to want them to operate at a set speed. And that's where the clock comes in. It regulates the speed at which your, uh, your device is going to operate. And so the most basic, the most basic clock is going to be the uh, redstone torch clock. And you're going to want an odd number of torches. So let's go with this. We'll put the torch in. One, two, and three. Now, what happens when you have a torch attached to a block and you apply power to that block, it turns the torch off. So, by... By... Power by, by having a, an odd number of torches power each other, you get a fairly regular set of redstone signals that pulse. And you can take you can draw this off of just about anywhere you want. One of the things that I, I like to do is put in some way to shut the clock off. So that basically, you know, so that you can be sure that the thing's not just gonna be running forever, 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 forever. Um, redstone torch clocks, you can actually make them a lot bigger than this. Um, this is just, this is one version. There are others. I'm going to actually show you another one that actually goes a little faster. Uh, the problem is, is that because of the constant updates like that and the lighting updates, it's really laggy. So let's look at another one here. Another type of uh, redstone clock if I can remember how to build the thing, 100%. Okay, redstone torch, redstone torch right there. Whatever, quit breaking. I'm gonna put some more redstone torches right there. And this one works a lot faster than those do. Uh, not all of those torches are 100% necessary, but it keeps them from burning out. It keeps them from, I mean, because they'll actually, uh, redstone torches will actually burn out, and then you've got a big problem on your hands. Um, so those are great. Those are great. Uh, there's another type of clock known as the repeater clock. The problem is, is that each repeater uses two redstone torches, redstone dust, iron, and some stone to accomplish all of its, uh, to accomplish all of its, uh, fun stuff there to, you know, to actually build one. I don't know why I just said fun stuff. And the shutoff for this one is actually going to be a sticky piston right here. And the way to turn this on is to either give it a little pulse. And the nice part about this one is it can be adjusted, whereas the other ones cannot. You can actually make the thing go pretty slow. Unfortunately, it's only adjustable to within a certain degree. And once you get them all turned on like that, you can, you can actually, if you get a little bit of lag in there and the updates happen weird, it can actually lock the whole clock up, which is why it's a good idea to leave the the mechanism in to restart it as well as your shutoff. So always, always, always have your shutoff in. And the biggest problem is, is watch what happens if I leave that power on for too long. It's now permanently powered. And that's another method that we can use to restart the thing. So that's a basic, that's a that's a basic, uh, a basic, uh, uh, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. That's the, that's a 
really basic repeater clock right there. Um, hopper clocks. Let's look at hopper clocks. Now we put, we've got one down. That one's not going to stay. We, we crouch down and tap into the other one there. And you'll notice the bottom of it is now pointed over here in this direction. So we're going to come over here and tap like that. Let's put redstone comparators so we can get a signal out of these things. You'll have to have the comparator to get a signal out. Um, so it becomes about as expensive as the uh, repeaters are, but it's going to take one piece of nether quartz, so you're going to have to go to the nether. We'll put one of those in there. And as you can see, we're pulsing back and forth now. So trying to get a redstone signal out of it is going to be somewhat interesting. Uh, there's ways that we can adjust the signal for that, but this is the most basic model of it. <coughs> there are some other things that we can do that will actually increase the interval. Uh, let's see here. We only want one out right there. We're going to put those on top like that. Trying to remember 100% how this clock goes, because that's all we need for that. So those will go right there. Those will go right there. That should go right there. <coughs> That and that go right there. Redstone torches right there. A hopper there. Hopper there. Destroy this one and a hopper there. And let's put a bunch of items in. So we'll put all that in there. Put all that in there. Let's put all the all those roses in there. And we'll put these comparators in there. And yeah, let's go. We'll put these hoppers in there too. Okay, so now we've got it full. What's going to happen is when, we, when we've done this, these hopper, this hopper right here is the uh, our first item over here is in this, this front hopper. That sends a signal back this way which turns this torch off. Now, now that the torch is turned off, this hopper here can empty its items slowly over into this hopper. So everything's locked up. Now when there's no signal here, when this one is completely empty, it will unpower this block, which is actually locking this hopper from moving. It will then push its item over here, send a signal back through here, turn this torch off, which will depower this hopper. It can then push its items over there. When it becomes empty, it, un it uh, depowers this block and lets the item go this way. When, the I when, the, when our one rose plant is over here in this one, it gives us a redstone signal. So that's a way to make a pretty slow clock. Um, let's look at uh, a type of clock that I built in my Let's Play, the Observer Clock. We want two observers facing this way, one with its smiling face, one with the backside. Boom, boom, like this. And then what happens is, we'll place one right here. As this observer is going to be looking at this block. This observer is going to be looking at this block, where the, red, where, where the redstone is. It's actually going to not be looking at the sand block. It's going to be looking at the redstone right there and looking for updates. As soon as we put this redstone down, it's going to detect an update, power the redstone behind it, which will cause this redstone as well to up, update. This guy's looking. He'll see the update. He'll power it over here. Boom. Okay. And we need to turn it on. Boom, 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 boom. We're getting, you can see we're getting the, uh, the, the two flickering redstone updates right there, which we can use to uh, power all manner of things. 
in a relatively easy fashion. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, we'll just use the redstone lamp. Now it's happening too fast to update the redstone lamps. So we'll put a repeater in, which will slow the signal down enough. And you see, it looks a little, a little bit irregular, and that's just because of the sheer amount of clocks we have operating in this area. So we've got that clock running. Uh, that one's turned off, but this clock is also running. So let me turn this clock off completely and totally. I will put a lever in right there. That should turn that clock off. Does that turn that, you know, I'm gonna break that one. I'll stick it right here. There we go. Now it's gonna constantly pull the power signal out, keep this thing locked up. As soon as that empties out, that clock will be turned off. And these two things should be pulsing a little more regularly at that point. Um, observers are still kind of new, so they're still a little glitchy. Um, yeah, that's about all I can say about that. And, <clears throat> Those are the basic types of clocks. The only other clock that you can build is going to be a daylight sensor clock. I'm gonna stick that right there. You could set it for nighttime, so it's only on during the nighttime. You could set it for daytime. The problem with the daytime is Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen, which is the maximum distance that redstone signal can travel. When the sun rises, it's going when the sun rises, it will then um, trigger this daylight sensor, which will then put out an output a redstone signal of one. Um, the next phase of the day, there's 15 phases of the day. There's actually 15 phases of the day with noon being um, number eight. And throughout, or no, noon being number 15 and working its way back down towards dusk. Dawn is, is at one. And what will happen is, and it'll, it will then go from the first phase, redstone power of one, second phase, redstone power of two, three, four, it, when it will work its way all the way down there. So you have effectively, 30 different times during the daytime cycle that this will pulse. And as we look here, we come all the way down to here. During the nighttime, it outputs a very fairly steady signal of 15. Now, knowing that there's different phases of the day is fairly handy. <clears throat> so you've got that differential output, but if you're using, let's say, an observer, let's say you're using an observer right next to it or even right next to it here, if you're using that observer, you're going to get all these different pulses. Now, if you only want one pulse per day, you probably either better set it way down there or put in the repeater, which is going to take that redstone power of one as long as the redstone power is one or more, it's going to output a redstone power of 15. It's going to be fully powered. So this is another type of clock here. Now you can use this uh, daylight sensor with, uh, let's say, the repeater to actually extend the length of time that it takes for this clock to run. But what you're saying is that basically during the daytime, I don't want this clock to run at all. Or at the nighttime, I don't want this clock to run at all. So it's going to take, uh, so that will make that clock take a little more time, but it's going to take its time unevenly unless you can use some clever redstone to figure out exactly how you're going to uh, cycle this thing so that it's a little more even. Unless, of course, your goal is a slightly uneven clock. That's, that doesn't hurt my feelings at all. All I'm doing is just showing you some clocks and kind of roughly explaining how they work. 
Uh, but that's about all the real types of clocks that there are. Um, there's a few others out there that are, they're not obscure, but they're limited use. As such, they don't really fall under the uh, purview of what we're doing here. So that's all I have time for, and that's all the clocks we have. So I will catch you guys on the next one.